Welcome back to another video. I am your tech guide, Wayne. Today I'm gonna to be bringing you a part two to our how to use the Samsung Galaxy A14 for beginners. Um, the first video received so much positive feedback. Thank you all for the comments if you left a comment on that first video. Um, and I just wanna follow it up and I wanna to continue to teach you how to use this phone and answer some of the questions that were uh, asked in the comment section on that first video. And just, again, we're gonna build on what you can do with this phone, answering the basic questions you guys have to help you just have a better experience using this phone. So do me a favor, if the video is helpful, please hit that like button down below. If you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our new videos. All right, so I'm gonna start the video answering two questions. So a few people on the first video asked, how do I take a screenshot on this phone? Now I actually have a video that goes over this, so go ahead and just hit the link right here and that will take you to that video that will teach you how to take a screenshot. So just wanted to point that out. Now another question I saw pretty frequently is what do I do if the phone freezes or it's not responsive? Maybe the touch screen isn't working. I'll have a link right here right now to another video that will teach you how to soft reset. That video is super helpful and it will walk you through the button combination that you hold on the phone to get the phone to restart if the touchscreen isn't working at all, okay? So, I wanted to get those two out the way. Now, let's go ahead and jump right in. And the first thing I wanna teach you how to do is how to save a phone number into your contacts so it'll be easier for you to call that number in the future. So, what you'll wanna do is, uh, the, the easiest way to do it is to go to the phone app here and you can just simply type in the phone number. That's the best place to start. So let's say I type in uh, a number here. So I've typed in this phone number and now I wanna save it in my phone. Right at the top of the screen, you'll see a plus. Tap on the plus and it will ask you one of two things. Create new contact, which is what we wanna do or you can update an existing contact. Now, you would use the second option if you already had someone's number saved, but maybe they changed their number, or maybe that person has a home phone and a cell phone, and you'd like to save both numbers, you would tap update existing, and you can have that number linked to their same contact uh, in your uh, address book on the phone. So, for the sake of this, we're gonna tap create new contact because we wanna save this number to the phone for the first time. Now, you're gonna see a pop-up here that's gonna ask you save contact to, and it'll say to the phone or it'll show a Gmail. Now, always save it to the Gmail and here's why. If you ever lose your phone, guess what? As long as you have saved all your contacts to Gmail, when you sign into your Google account on the new phone, it's going to bring over all of your saved phone numbers. So this is just kind of a fail safe. It's basically keeping a copy of your address book in the cloud. So if again, you ever lose your phone or guess what? Well, if the phone just stops working, you can't access it at all, no problem. You just sign in with that new Gmail account on the new phone and all your contacts will automatically load on that phone. So I'm gonna select Google right here. And then I'm gonna put in a name for that contact. I'm just gonna put in Jim Miller. Okay, there's our contact. And then I can hit, hit the plus here. If I wanted to add a second phone number, you could have multiple numbers saved. Let's hit the drop down here. I can then add an email address for that person. I can tap view more. And now I can add additional information, maybe their home address, maybe important dates, maybe their relationship. I can add uh, additional notes like where I met the person. If they have a, a business website, I can add that here. So you'll just tap in these uh, boxes here and you can add as much or as little information as you would like tied to that contact. And then come back to the top if you tap on the picture, this will give you the option to save that person's uh, picture. So uh, for example, if you'd like their picture to pop up when they call you, then you'd simply tap on here, 
And it will give you two options. You can go to your gallery and you can find a picture you already have of that person in your phone, or you can select camera and select while using. And this will allow you to basically, if that person is right in front of you, just simply take a picture of the person. I can't get my wallet to stand up. Okay, here we go. Let's just take a picture. So if that person's right in front of you, just simply snap a picture of them. And now it'll let you adjust it like this. So now every time Jim Miller calls, this is the picture I'm gonna see. So this is just great if you're setting the phone up for someone else and you want them to know who's calling and you know, this is just a great thing to add when you set up a contact. So. That is the process simply of how you save a phone number and guess what you can actually save it to your speed dial to make it easier for you to call that number in the future. Come to the upper right corner tap on the three dots tap on speed dial numbers and here it says enter a name or number. So guess what I'm going to type in Jim Miller and select it now. Jim Miller is going to be number two on my speed dial. So watch this. I'm going to back out of this. Let's say I want to call Jim. I'm going to tap on the phone. I'm going to just tap the two. And guess what? He's the first number that's going to show up on my speed dial right here. So that's a cool trick that will not only help you save that number in the phone, but also help you bring up that number quicker in the future. The next thing I want to go over is how to move the apps on and off of this home screen. So there will be apps that will just come already on the home screen. Some people don't like this because you might say, oh, I don't use this Galaxy Store thing. How do I get this off the home screen? Well, let me show you how to do that. So let's hold down, take your finger and just simply put it on the screen right on that icon for one second. You'll get this pop up. When you get the pop up, you can simply tap remove and that will take it off of the home screen. It's not going to delete the app. It's still on your phone, but it's going to move it off of the home screen. So now if I swipe up, guess what? It's still here. I just don't have to look at it every time I open the phone. Now, what if I want to move an app from this screen to the next screen? I'm going to just put my finger on this app here. And then when this pop up comes up, I'm going to drag the icon to the right. Keep your finger on the screen and just simply drag it over. And this will allow you to create a new page. So now I still have my regular page and now I have this page and guess what? I can make more pages by simply taking my finger, putting it on the icon. You want to keep it on the screen and then drag it over. And that's how you create more pages. If you'd like to have different apps on different pages. Okay, moving on, I want to show you now how to keep your screen on longer. You might notice that um, the screen goes dim quite quick. And so to keep your screen on longer, there's a tweak in the settings that will keep the screen on longer and make it easier for you to just use the phone. So swipe down from the top of the screen in the upper right corner, tap on the settings wheel. We're going to swipe up and go to display. Swipe up again go to screen timeout. Now I have mine set to five minutes. When you first buy the phone, it's set to 15 seconds. And so you'll notice the screen is going to go dim very quickly or go to sleep really quickly. So to be able to keep the screen on longer, change this to either two minutes or five minutes that will allow the phone to sit on longer without you having to touch the screen every few minutes. Okay. Now let's back out. I want to show you one more thing. Now you might notice how my whole background is black and the texts are white. Um, if you would like to change it on your phone, so you have this same thing, it tends to be a little easier on the eyes at the very top of the display menu. You'll have these two options. You'll have dark mode and light mode right now. I'm in the dark mode. And so it switches all the menus. So all the menus that normally have a white background, it switches to a black background. So watch this. If I jump to here, it will change it. 
and it'll make the background white. Now, again, I prefer the dark background. It's just a bit easier on the eyes. So if you'd like to switch it, that is the easy way to do that. Okay, let's move on to our next uh, tip here. I think you guys are really gonna like this. For those of you that have an email address and you like to keep track of your emails, this is a really cool um, tip that's gonna help you just keep a better eye on your new emails. So I'm gonna swipe over here to my blank home screen here. Take your finger, I'm gonna hold down on the home screen. And we're gonna go to the section labeled widgets. Now, what is a widget? There are different shortcuts that you can have appear on your home screen, and they just feed information to different things. Some of them are shortcuts to apps. Some of them are shortcuts to um, pieces of information. So for example, if we go to widgets here, there are a lot of cool options here. For example, you can have a calendar widget that will show you the entire month. Uh, let's see. You could have a full calendar show up on your home screen, or you can have simply a list of upcoming events that you have plugged into your uh, Google Calendar. So for example, if I hold down on this one here, and I just drag it up and let it go, it's gonna show up on my home screen. And now, this is my main screen. When I swipe over, I'll be able to see all my upcoming events. So for example, if, if I know I have an appointment tomorrow, I can go into my calendar, hit the plus, and I can type in uh, lunch with, lunch with Jim. And I can, let's see, let's change the date here. Let's change the time to one o'clock p.m. You can set an alarm for it to give you a little nudge so you know when you're close to the time to leave, hit save. And now my event is gonna show up on the calendar on my home screen. So you might set up an appointment for two weeks. Simply come over here, hit the plus, plug it into your calendar and you'll always have your schedule show up on your home screen. That's a very useful widget right there. I use that one on my personal phone. And for some of you guys, it'll be helpful to just keep track of your appointments. Now, let's look at some of the other widgets here. Let's hold down the home screen. Let's tap on widgets. Now, one of my favorite widgets is the Gmail widget. I'm gonna hit the arrow here to see all the options that are available. So this is the inbox widget. And this will show you all of your new emails, the emails that have just hit your inbox. You can look at them without actually going into the Gmail app. It's a great way to just keep an eye on if any important emails have come to you recently. So I'm gonna hold down until I get to this screen and then let it go. It's gonna ask you what folder you want it to show. Always select the primary folder and now you'll notice there's these little dots around the edges. If I drag the little dot out, I can make the widget bigger. And there's a dot at the bottom here, I can simply drag that down. And now I have my top five emails that have just come through my inbox. And I can scroll through my emails without actually going in to my email account. Kind of cool, right? So again, these are called widgets and they're just, you know, shortcuts to, you know, different pieces of information. So again, every time you turn your phone on, you'll have this on your main screen. And as you swipe over, you'll have your events and you'll be able to quickly glance at if any new emails have hit your inbox. This is a great way to just keep track. Uh, you might be looking out for an important email and guess what? You'll know if it came through or not. So that's another really useful widget. Let's take one more glance through and see if there's any other good widgets for you guys to consider, at least some of my favorites. So let's see, we've done the Gmail one already. We've done the calendar one. Let's go through. You can have a Google Maps widget. It'll always show you, um, let's see, let's open it up really quickly here. You can have a shortcut to a destination. 
Um, maybe you can like program, for example, your work address. So whenever you tap on, um, I want to say it is this one here. Whenever you tap on that widget, it'll always put in your work address and, and basically it'll just start navigating you there. So it's kind of a shortcut. That one's kind of cool. This one is great too, the traffic widget. If you were to put in your work address, it'll also, it'll tell you how long it takes to get there. And so obviously, if you look at this at night, the time is gonna be different from looking at it when you wake up in the morning. So that's another really helpful widget as well. There is a reminders widget that's pretty cool. This one, you can set um, different uh, tasks for you to do. In fact, let's, let's go ahead and move this one as well. Let's hold down on it and drag it onto the screen and just let go. So on this screen, we had upcoming events and here you can have a task. So maybe today you need to go to the post office and you need to go to Ralph's to pick up ground beef and then you need to pick up um, shampoo for your dog or Petco, whatever. Simply hit the plus and you can begin to add new reminders. Um, and then if you really want to make it even easier for yourself, you can tap on this microphone here. Go to the cleaners. Hit save and it'll automatically, you know, type it up as you say it. Go to the cleaners. Let's do another one. Go to the post office. Oh, go to the post office. Save that. Call and check on Jim. And so on and so forth. And guess what? Once you complete a task, simply go in, tap on the little bubble, and it will, oh, it didn't do it. Let's try again. Hit the bubble, and it will basically cross it off your list, and it'll move it away. So these are just a few of the widgets that are available. I would encourage you to go through and try out some of the other ones you see there. Um, widgets are one of the really unique things to Android, and it just gives you all these extra productivity tools to make it easier to keep track of your life and things that are important that you have to do. So um, I wanna give another plug to a video I think will be helpful for you guys. So I have a video that'll teach you how to change the background. Maybe you want your wallpaper to be a picture of a family member or um, maybe you just want to find something fun and different, check out this video right here. And it's a how to set up the A14 video. And in that video, I go over how to change the wallpaper. So that's another useful video I think you guys will enjoy. So um, anyway, guys, this wraps up our video. I wanted to continue to build on this series since there were so many positive comments on the first one. So uh, a couple of things I wanna mention as we close out the video. Well, number one, if it was helpful, please help me out, hit that like button. This is how the video uh, can grow and reach more people is when you like it, then leave positive feedback. YouTube sees that and it will recommend the video to more people. Second, you can check out this accessory store right here. You'll find some really cool um, cases and gadgets that will go with this phone. Um, some things you may not even have known that you need it for the phone that might make life a little easier, so check out that list. And then uh, number three, keep leaving comments. So as you have new questions that come up, I wanna encourage you to come back to the comment section and ask your questions. What I'm going to attempt to do is, as, as a lot more comments come through, I'm gonna make a part three, and then I wanna go over, I wanna answer those questions. So I wanna to continue to build, as you guys have questions, as you're learning, continue to come in, drop your positive feedback, and drop your new questions, and then I can work on that part three for you. So. Thank you so much for watching. I'm glad the series has been helpful for many of you. And let's continue to learn and just get a little bit better with our technology every day. Thanks again for watching, guys. Take care, and as always, have a good one.